training these models is constrained by uh, the compute available in your cluster, uh, the memory bandwidth and memory available on your cluster, and the uh, communication between nodes of the cluster on which you're doing this training. Um, we look at a few different metrics while we're doing this sort of optimization. One is the model flops utilization. Um, we know how many flops of compute are available uh, in the hardware we're using, so we can calculate theoretically the maximum throughput that we would get on our hardware. Uh, and so we know, you know if, if we had an MFU of 100%, there would just be nothing left to optimize. And that gives us some sense of uh, how much more optimization we can do. Similarly, we know the memory uh, bandwidth of the chip, so we know the size of all of the weights of the model, and so there's a theoretical maximum of uh, the training throughput that we can achieve just getting all of those weights to pass through the uh, compute unit. Um, and then while we're doing training, we're looking at tokens per second of training throughput, uh, and we see significant improvements as we make various optimizations to uh, the memory, uh, compute, and uh, setup of uh, communication. Um, so uh, there are a number of steps here. We uh, need to get Torch Compile working on the model and make it sure that it's operating efficiently with Torch Compile, uh, and that involves uh, you know, removing graph breaks and getting it to work properly with FSTP. Um, Activation checkpointing enables trade-offs between uh, compute and memory. Uh, with activation checkpointing, you save parts of your activations and then recompute activations further down as your data flows through the model. Uh, so you're able to uh, get better memory utilization, but at the cost of uh, a bit of more compute from recomputing your activations. Um, and as we make these optimizations, we end up uh, uncovering other bottlenecks. If you improve one far enough, then you end up just sort of running into bottlenecks in uh, some other aspect of your training setup. Um, one example of this is as we achieved certain MFU levels, we ran into bottlenecks in our data loader setup. Uh, there's another talk at 4.30 that goes into more detail uh, by Davis um, on our data loader setup and how that was optimized. but. Any of these sorts of things that we're optimizing, we get a bit better in one area, and then we kind of have to make trade-offs and get better in another area. Uh, in this talk, uh, we're going to go through the graph break optimization, FSDP usage, and activation checkpointing, um, walk through a bit of a comparison of the models that we trained and how those did, and the best setup for uh, our cluster. And, you know, in, in your own cluster, you might have different, uh, different trade-offs that you might need to make. But this is sort of a, a practical talk of applying these techniques uh, to our training setup on our data. Um, not as much of a talk about how each of these underlying things work or you know, the implementation details of uh, Torch Compile, et cetera. Um, and I'm going to hand it off to Anthony, who's going to go into more detail on Torch Compile.